Are you interested in drawing your pistol from the common outside the waistband, three o'clock position? You'll see this a lot in tactile training and classes. If you're interested, this video is for you. All right, welcome back. So the rig you see here, the battle belt I have, is very common in classes. You might not see a tactile style holster, but you might see something a little bit closer to the waist, more kind of like your concealed carry type, um, more civilian type of holster rather than militaristic. But the, the techniques I'm gonna share are some major techniques out there that are, you know, are very, very, very common. And as I mentioned in other draw videos, there will be other techniques and variations that you learn out there, but this could be your baseline, particularly if you're a beginner, you've never really learned how to draw. So with this carry position, we're gonna talk about it from two different uh, scenarios here. If our hands were up here, maybe I was shooting a rifle, then I have to go to my pistol, or if my hands were more you know, in the neutral position, they were down here in front of me or to the side. This video, like the previous two draw videos, is not going to discuss what to do once the gun is out of our out of the holster and going down range we've discussed that in the first video talking about appendix carry where you're going to have a touch point in the trigger guard marry your hands and then punch out okay we are just concerned about getting proper mechanics techniques here with our hands getting our pistol out of the holster right here to the safe position and then we're going to stop here everything else is the same with other videos you're going to marry your hands and then present okay and I also show three different presentations um, in the concealed carry video, again, but not the topic of this video. So when I am, we're gonna start here with our hands down here. We want to, if possible, have a touch point or an idea of where our gun is. So if you ever see experienced shooters, if their hands are here and they need to draw with their pistol, they most likely are gonna be touching their pistol somehow here whether it be kind of like their hand on it, their forearm. I like to use my forearm to touch the pistol so I know where it is. Because if you're moving around and you don't know where your gun is, you might not have a good grip on your gun. So the first thing we're going to do here is talk about establishing that touch point here. It could be anything for you, right? So now I have it, I know where it is. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to do a snatch draw. Okay, the snatch draw is where I'm gonna exaggerate my movements. I'm gonna bring my elbow up high, okay, for now, just exaggerate the movements. And then I'm going to drive the web of my hand into the back of the pistol, nice and high on the grip. I don't wanna go down here, I wanna go high, okay? So I'm gonna bring my elbow up and then drive down. Once I drive down, then I can establish my entire grip. The beauty of outside the waistband here is I can already wrap my thumb. So I can have what's called a master grip. Now, depending on the holster you use, you're gonna to have to defeat retention. If you guys are not aware of what retention is, that is a locking mechanism on certain holsters. So this gun is not going to come out unless you press a button of some kind, okay? We're not gonna dive into that. All of you are going to have different retention devices and uh, you can figure out, it, it usually will be natural part of your draw stroke. For example, this has a button here right by the thumb. So as I grip, I would just press that button. Now the gun can come out, okay? But what we want first is this. We are going to establish our touch point here with our forearm or whatever part of our hand or uh, arm and I'm going to drive my elbow back and then right down on the pistol okay in the beginning I'm exaggerating so you can see the motion and then drive it down okay but notice now the difference here when I become more efficient is you're not seeing this drive up all the way okay I'm just enough space to clear it and then I get a good master grip I literally have the grip I'm going to use when I shoot here while the gun is still in the holster at least with my firing hand. So I'm here, bring the elbow up, okay? The same time I do this, this is very common, but there are variations to it. The same time I bring my elbow up, I'm going to get this hand out of the way. Lots of different techniques here. I'm just going to share one, just getting it right by your stomach like this, okay? You, lots of different ways, okay, variations. I'm not gonna dive into that right now, okay? So I'm here, and once I bring my elbow up, my support hand is out of the way too because I don't want to flag myself once I take this gun out. The snatch draw here, the whole idea is I'm snatching something up. So when I do this, so both hands are moving at the same time, okay? I'm snatching the gun. There's a little bit of a push on the holster. I'm going to exaggerate here. So I push down really hard here, okay? You don't need to do that. You just need a little bit of a push. I'm gonna take the pistol out. You want a little bit of a push on this pistol so that you ensure you're taking up all space here at the beaver tail, okay? So if it was like this, okay, maybe I gripped here that little push might bring me back up or bring me to the top of the beaver tail, right? So I want that for a good uh, firing hand grip. So I'm here, I have my touch point. 
support hand moves, the same time my firing hand moves, I get my master grip. I push down just to make sure I have no space here. I pushed into any open space there, there might have been. Now from here, all I'm going to do is bring that pistol up, straight up, clearing the holster, okay? There is a little detail here that can help, and depending on your holster, it may or may not apply to you, but as I grip my gun and as I'm pulling up, I also have slight forward pressure here. So when I have slight forward pressure, the gun pops out, and it's kind of helping me make sure I point this gun down range in a safe direction rather than you know throw it out here anywhere, okay? So yes, yeah, so we are doing this dry fire. And so again, I'm here, touch point. I'm going to drive my elbow up, get a good grip on the gun. My support hand moves at the same time. Now I'm going to draw my gun straight up. I might have a little pressure moving this way. The gun pops out. And now I am literally at where we've talked about in the past three videos. And I dove into this more in the Penix Care video. Marry my hands up, get the proper touch points, and then present in the way that you'd like. Okay, now we are doing this dry fire at first and it's very important that before you start building speed and before you start shooting live ammo, you do everything slow and deliberate. You can even look at yourself, do see if you're doing everything right. Then you can begin to not look at yourself if you feel comfortable and you believe you're doing everything correctly. Do it smoothly, correctly, and then you can build up the speed where I'm working dry fire, but I am now going faster doing this all before live ammo. And speaking of dry fire, it will be very beneficial to get the dry fire mag. You've seen this in a lot of our videos. It's going to allow you to reset your trigger automatically, and this is gonna make practice more effective and efficient. You can work on trigger control much better. So I highly recommend this device if you guys are doing dry fire, especially with a striker fired pistol. And if you do, purchase the dry fire mag from their site. We have a partnership with them. You can get $10 off using the code TACHIVE, and we are throwing in our online course, Mastering Trigger Control. So all the details below. So what I'm doing here during dry fire is I'm progressively adding more steps. So I started here, then drawing, then meeting my hands, going for presentation, ensuring I can do it smoothly, then add the speed, okay? So that is what to do if our hands are down here, roughly, where you can kind of touch your gun. You know where it is. So you know where it is just by touching this here. So I just bring my elbow up and notice, I still have contact with the gun. And notice, when I have contact with this gun, with my arms to the side, I keep contact the whole time. Notice, well, as I bring it up, I'm still sliding my forearm on it. I do not lose contact with this pistol. So I know where it is all the time, okay? So I don't need to do any kind of other touch point. I'm feeling it the entire way, and now I have my master grip. Now let's talk about if our hands are up here. This is different because now we don't know where our gun is. We don't know perhaps this, you know, our, 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 our belt, belt is not set up properly. Maybe it's loose, the holster may have moved, whatever it is. If I don't know where the gun is, I might miss it, right? Lots of different ways to do this too. I'm just gonna share one way with you. And when our hands, maybe we're shooting a rifle, the rifle goes dry, we need to get this pistol, or maybe our hands are up and now we need to get this pistol. This is one way you can do this, okay? So similar to when I go for the gun, my support hand clears the way. So in a similar manner, whenever we go for the gun, the support hand gets out of the way. We don't wanna potentially flag ourselves. From here too, if I'm going for the gun with my firing hand, the support hand is going to come close to my chest. Lots of different techniques to do this. You're gonna see lots of, lots of different radiations when it comes to this. I'm just gonna have you guys bring your hand in close, okay? When we're here, the main thing though is I have to have a touch point, right? I need to know where this gun is. One easy way to do the touch point is to just touch it with your fingers, okay? Some of you might use the palm of your hand, same, same thing. The idea is the same here. We need to know where this gun is before we drive in because if we don't know and we're starting to drive here, well, we might miss it or we might grab here and it's not a good grip. So when I'm here, what you guys can do is you're going to establish your touch points. I'm firing a gun or maybe my hands are up here. I am going to bring my support hand close to my body as my firing hand looks for the grip and I just touch, okay? As I touch, that is now my cue to drive in. Everything else is the same. So this, this movement when our hands are down here, okay? That is the only thing that differs from this. Now once I'm here, it's the same. I'm gonna snatch it, I come up, marry my hands and then I get to work. So I'm here looking at you. It might be I'm firing my rifle, it goes dry or there's a malfunction. My support hand comes close as my firing hand touches the pistol grip. Once I touch, that is my cue to immediately drive. I don't wait here, okay? I drive down. And 
as you get better, you'll smooth that out. So when you're starting, it might be position one, position two, position three. That's my, you know, that might break down. That might be how it breaks down. But eventually, you're gonna touch and smoothly come in, just like I did right there, all right? So you did not see me stop here and then drive in. It just immediately went to the grip, okay? And you will get there, you'll become more smooth through practice. Right? So the only difference here is the beginning. When we're down here, I have my touch point here, okay? And I drag my form so I can continually have physical contact, then snatch the gun. Here, the difference is I have to establish it here, okay? One pointer is that when I'm going for this gun from when my hands are up, I like to just bend my elbow if possible, okay? It's not the end of the world, but you don't necessarily have to be moving your entire arm, it's just bending the elbow bending the elbow, and then driving in. No matter which method you use, once this gun is out, everything else is the same. You're gonna marry your hands, present, and then break those shots. This is much simpler than the other draws because you don't have to worry about defeating a garment. Now, retention might be the most complicated thing for some of you, and your holsters are going to be different, but this is very straightforward. The main thing is have a touch point. If your hands are down here, it's usually gonna be something like this, or you're gonna to touch it somewhere here and then drive down to the gun. The actual technique, the snatch is very easy. Just don't overdo it. You do not need to drive the gun really hard, you know, far down. It's just a little bit just to ensure that you are trying to take up all space and you have a good grip, then immediately draw and then present to the target. All right, so I'm just gonna do a few live fire reps just to drive in a few details. And, and for those of you who are brand new to drawing from a holster, to give you a little bit of a progression. So just like your dry fire, you might wanna start, if our hands are on the side here, is I'm just trying to get my support hand out of the way as I get a grip on my gun, using the techniques that I shared earlier in the video. And once I'm here and I feel very confident and I'm doing this quickly and safely, you can move on to the next step. The next step will be to Get your master grip, really have a good grip on it as I draw the gun out of my holster. When I draw the gun out of my holster, notice how I am already building a habit of beginning to point it down range, okay? Notice it's pointing on a 45 degree angle rather than down here, okay? Because when you draw, you essentially have made the decision to engage. So if I know my target is over here, I'm going to get this going. The momentum is already starting to point at my potential threat. So if I had a threat down here, my movements are beginning to prepare me to get my gun pointed in direction, but still not far enough or not too far that I'm already flagging someone. It's just going, it's pointing down here at the dirt on a 45 degree angle rather than just straight down here, okay? So that might be the second step where I'm here, this arm is in a safe direction and I'm here. So I'm, this is step one. Then after I'm comfortable with that, step two, it's right over here. Then step three, I marry my hands, okay? And then after that might be the full presentation that we've talked about in previous videos, right? Your target is not going to be important when you're working the draw. You need to pay attention to what you're doing with your body and your arms, maybe video yourself, have a friend take a look at your technique and things like that. And as I discussed in previous videos, you can look at what you're doing and then as you're comfortable, then you can stop looking at what you're doing because you know you have good technique already. And then just focus on doing a nice smooth draw. And after you can do a nice smooth draw where you don't have a lot of breaks, then you can begin to increase the speed. It doesn't have to be blazing fast, but you adjust based on your skill level. And then later on, you're going to really begin to time yourself, ensure that you are beating your baseline, so on and so forth. So that is the draw from here with our arms down. Now, if our hands are up here, like I discussed, we need that touch point. Once we have the touch point, we come down on the gun, we snatch down, everything else is the same, okay? So I'm here, maybe I'm starting with my hands over here. I establish my touch point at the same time my support hand gets out of the way. I drive in, everything else is the same here. I start here, then maybe I graduate to marrying my hands and then break the shot. So this might be the first iteration, I'm here or I'm shooting a rifle. It might just be this, touch point, touch point. Then after that, it might be touch point straight to the grip. Then after that, it might be touch point straight to the grip and then I bring my pistol up, but it's not full presentation. Okay, then after that, it might be marrying my hands. 
And then after that, it is the full draw to presentation and then a shot. Okay, so that is how I would break it apart as you're starting. So there you guys have it. There are some additional details on the outside the waistband draw from the three o'clock position, which is the most common you're gonna see out there in your typical firearms class or tactical training class. If you guys have any questions, let us know in the comment section below. As always, if you like the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next video.